Well, transition in energy, of course, is a part of the global transition. What is happening now, and it's, it's the right place to speak about the fourth industrial revolution. The fourth industrial revolution, what that huge impact on what's happening here in the world, and one of the scenarios, I, I prefer to have the green one, which uh, looks much more sort of nicer for the world population. Why, because it's more even keeled, as we just suggested. Exactly. Yeah. But the fourth industrial revolution is accompanied much more revolutionary uh, processes here. I call them our revolution, revolutionary revolution. Basically, the fourth industrial revolution is not an evolution when you have evolution, then revolution, another evolution, another revolution, and the fourth one. It will be exponential growth of many things. And as we heard today as well, it will be also a merger of biology, technology, energy, and politics as well. So what will change in, in this world is not only the new technology, how much, uh, which type of energy we are using, but also the way we are managing it, technologically and politically. And from that point of view, the risks that we are facing are going to be not the classical ones that we know. I mean, you go back 30, 40 years or 50 years ago, the political risk that we were facing, the world was divided between two empires. At the end, there was a competition. There were risks related to this war or that war that was to be predicted, and the oil prices was jumping up or jumping down. That's what it was. Mm. The reality is that any risk is connected with predictability. The higher predictability, the lower is the risk. And the predictability has many components. It has industrial, economic, macroeconomic, and so on, but one of them is, is political as well. The political risks, <laughs> if you go back now, the 20, 30 years, were classical risks, which could have been guessed or accounted, and, uh, and in many forms it was about cooperation or non-cooperation between states, nations, their interests, and so on and so forth. The new world is the world of a quantum behavior. I think the small gadget that each of us has and has not brought here in order to is our life, our information, our family, our archive, our accounting, our credit card, and so on and so on, but also a new way of participating in politics. I think that this political movement worldwide is becoming more and more quantum at the end of the day. Look what was happening in many places of the world. I mean, the election of a young, talented politician in France just a couple of years ago was a quantum effect when addressing to the people was not to a traditional institution, the political party, the organization, but directly to the public. And they are interacting. It's not only that they are voting only four or five years once, but they are involved in that process every day, like through the Facebook or Twitter and so on. The quality of exchange of information has changed as well. Let's go back 60, 70 years ago, I mean, when radio was first used by presidents of the United States and later in Europe and further down as a way of communication. Then the television, see that? And uh, President Kennedy was one of the first to use that power. And then you go further down, President Obama and then President Trump, addressing directly to the people. He is involved in direct dialogue with people every day who is good well, this Well, I don't think that I'm going to comment on what uh, your discussions were with the head of the KGB. <laughs> <laughs> Neither the, uh, he was a character uh, like from the 1950s, but he was pretty impressive. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, I, I would uh, like more to speak about uh, 2020, 2030, 2050 than what happened before. And that brings me to the, to the same point. I think we're getting more diversified world, much more sort of a, a world which is much more dynamic. From that point of view, it becomes a bit more predictable. And at the end of the day, this brings us to more sort of predictable stability at the end of the day. So I don't think that we have the same feeling of, or we're more afraid that we'll, that will be a big major political event or award somewhere, because we, we have learned how to manage it. Huh. Why is that, can you say? Because of the diversity. And at the end of the day, we're introducing more and more new technologies. In our discussions, there are two or three small elements, small elements that are missing. The one elephant is, for example, no nuclear. Yeah. I, mean, I, don't, I don't know, is it politically correct to speak about nuclear or not? 
But at the end of the day, I had 40 minutes left. I was going to bring it up. But that's okay. Very good. No, no you can fast matters. forward as a co-moderator. No good matters. No good matters at the end of the day because we from our, our past, which was black, burning coal and fossil fuel, or from our sort of grayish sort of presence today, where we are adding some green color to our current thing as the renewables. Up to the absolutely green and beautiful future, I think we have to go years, years ahead. The question is, will nuclear be a part of that or not? Of course, I do understand what people have. Should it be, is your view? My personal view, it should be, because that will accelerate, because nobody has really calculated mathematically what is, what is the damage that we are doing by burning oil and, and coal to the planet, to the environment and the climate. And that change in climate will have dramatic uh, dramatic impact on us. It will create tsunamis that will destroy, destroy things like the Fukushima, for example. Human area that creates the, the, the tragedy of Chernobyl. But at the end of that, the technology with the new ones, with the 100 megawatt trend, will make them a small compact ones. I think the nuclear has, has a, a possible future. Because at the end of it, do, doesn't... Do, do you have the caveats, Dr. Sarkeesian, with, with uh, where it's built? The technology it's that we have today, as every technology, it should be it should be clear international standards. But with the fourth industrial revolution or our revolution, what is happening now, introduction of things like artificial intelligence that will make that. The second, I think, small element is we didn't speak about hydro mm -hmm. at the end of the day, and hydro matters. And for many countries like Armenia, we have a very balanced energy portfolio. It starts with a, with a nuclear power. And that's a Soviet build, build on BBR 430, which is, this is not an ultra-modern build by Ariba or something. And it works steadily all of these years. We don't survive two big earthquakes and so on. So, so it's all about know-how in the future. Second, we have hydro. The third, we are pushing ahead with the renewables in Armenia as well. And Armenia is exporting electricity. We're not exporting, we're not exporting gas because we don't have gas, but we're exporting electricity. The third point that I would like to add to this discussion is water. Water as, as, as a natural resource. Okay, we have coal and oil here, but we have also water as a natural resource, which is very, very important. All of the countries that we're referring to are very rich in natural resources. They are rich in sun, wind, oil, not water, but not water. Yeah. And water matters because, first of all, water in 50 or 100 years now will be a source of energy where we'll learn how to, to have that as a controlled uh, thermonuclear processes, and water will become not only for drinking, but also producing a lot of energy, that glass of water. Secondly, we, I consider Armenia as a part of the Middle East as well. Armenia doesn't have oil and gas. It has other natural resources, but it has huge resources of water. I mean, unfortunately, we probably are using around 10 or 20 percent of our water, and the other 80 percent is way waste. So water is another, because a lot of your energy, be that renewable or, or burning, that valuable thing which is called oil. Oil is not for burning. I mean, we are, this is the latest burning oil. Mm. It's so rich, natural resource. We can make food of it, we can make medicine of it, we can make anything, but we are burning at the end of the day. Can I, can I bring, bring a follow-up to you on this? So we see billions, as Menard knows, Patrick sees it as well, billions of dollars going into downstream petrochemicals by uh, Adnoc in particular, and, and Abu Dhabi, Saudi Aramco has de uh, declared their plans. And there seems to be a mental break, and, and Lee, if you want to jump in on this, is that the future is plastics. We hear it all the time. Oh, there's so much uh, demand for plastics in the future, and half the world seems to say that we need to be eliminating plastics because of the, the crisis. Where is the break? Is it going to be used for both or not? I know it's, it's a fairly complex question, but is there going to be that much demand for petrochemicals because of emerging market growth? that they have this equation right, and Menard, please jump in after Dr. Sarkis. Well, I'll think, ask for some brevity because of time. Please. Well, yeah, I think it will be very, uh, I've been while watching this, uh, thanks to World Economic Forum, where I was for years chairing the Global Energy Security Council, and watching all these predictions of how much oil is there in the world. First, panic that the oil is getting, uh, there's no, no much oil uh, in all this planet, and we have a lot of it, are we going to use it or not? But the predictions are changing will be changing in five years or two years' time when you show me another graph, it will be different. Because there will be other contributions like technology, like uh, the change of the structure of our economy uh, from, from the broad belt to startups, uh, smaller local 
and introducing things like artificial intelligence, big data management. That will help to manage the city. That will help to minimize, optimize the way we are mm -hmm. running. We're running our energy and resources as well. So it will be dramatic change. Let's meet in two years' time, and I would like to discuss with you the curves that you have presented here. So the world is changing very fast. And I think from that point of view, whatever we do in fossil fuel, oil, and connected it, I think we have to be looking wider and have sort of a more inclusive, including are we going to use the plastics yeah. tomorrow? Or how much effect will have artificial intelligence all of our discussion tomorrow? Yeah. Okay, good. I mean, I want you to jump in, and Patrick, feel free. Go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with the response 100%. Today, you know, this fluctuation in oil price has actually caused a bit of instability. That's probably around $4. Uh, Per, per million BTU uh, gas price knows its role in providing that uh, backup uh, system for the intermittent system. Well, I think we're creating a discussion between one former physicist with another one. Angela Merkel was yes. specialized in quantum uh, chemistry, and I was on quantum physics and uh, the theoretical astrophysics. I think her approach, and even in Germany, you go back another 20 years ago, the understanding of the importance of nuclear was there. But big tragedies create a great um, sort of interpretation of a risk. And of course, today the nuclear has become some, something which, which people don't feel comfortable at all. Even in France, with the decision of the last week. Of yes, I do agree with that. But as we were, I think one of my conclusions here is that we do agree that if we don't have some dramatic changes or dramatic moves at the end of the, the, the path from getting rid of coal up to the complete renewable will be quite long. In the meantime, we will damage the environment and the, and the climate. And the damage that will, will create the damage to climate will not be just a passive damage. That passive that damage will be dramatic, creating more droughts, creating more problems with the food, with the less water, the more, more desert, deserts, and at the end of the day, no deserts, deserts. And I think and that will have more tsunamis in the world. So I think the choice is, do we try to find other solutions? And the solutions could be more uh, hydro, more new technology based, yours or something that I cannot predict today. More efficient, more optimized, using the new technologies. And that will, these technologies will go very fast, using definitely big data management. I mean, I'm giving you small details, but they will become big tomorrow in the 21st century. And at the end of the day, we can not just ignore nuclear because we're afraid of it. Sure. Yeah, because uh, nuclear and... Because so you have two G7 countries now that have said, you know... Yeah, you know? I, I do understand that, but uh, if you go back, I mean, 10, 15 years ago, a lot of European countries were excited when they had building more and more, including the United Kingdom. They have already lost the, the know-how of making a nuclear power plant, so yeah. they have to go to France, to Arriva and India to make a nuclear power plant. So we don't want to end up in Europe, at the end of it, except France, everybody has lost, lost the techn nuclear technology. They have lost. Uh, Italy, Germany, UK, and so on. So who has it? Is that the United States, Russia, Korea? I mean, the one which is in, 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 in Emirates is Korea. And China. I think we don't want to use technology to lose technology which are important because they can be developed into something which is much more safer. So I think the right balance, and I agree with you, I think we don't have much time. I think we have to be pushing, doing parallel processing, not just on having one second, let's fight against coal. I think let's fight against coal that use much more to better uh, gas and oil, that can use as, as quick as possible renewables. And let's not forget about, about hydro, but let's not forget about uh, nuclear energy, and use the maximum of the new technology, data management, optimization, because I agree with you, we don't have much time.